today we're at the Bersendorfer factory and we're going to have a factory tour. There's also a showroom at the, at the front entrance. Uh, here's the reception. We're not allowed to video much in the factory, but uh, my guide will tell me when we're allowed to do that. Here's the showroom area. I've been talking to the, the voicing technician, some very interesting information about hammers. I'll try and share as we go along, but if you look, you can see the display here and uh, the technician working. So we'll come back to the showroom later on, but we're going now into the factory. You see the stockpile of wood here. Uh, I'll have to talk, ask them how long they keep the wood uh, to before it's ready to use. So the wood here is kept for apparently about five years. Spruce, white beech and maple mainly, not for sandboard construction. Uh, white beech, red beech and maple here. Apparently the sandboards are Strunz, which is uh, an, an Austrian firm. We've used them ourselves too. So, uh, this is the drying centre where the, the timber is dried out after it's um, uh, been weathered outside. <laughs> so the wood is uh, dried before it's cut obviously and then it's uh, drying again here. So the wood here is dried to about 7% apparently. So here's the rest planks and uh, they look like dead ignite rest planks, very similar. And they have uh, maple on top of that. Now this is spruce and surprisingly to me it's actually used on the outer case. Uh, the idea of being to get resonant case principle, I think it's called, uh, where the case actually resonates. Um, so. When, when it's necessary to hold things like the soundboard, it's going to be red beech, uh, but otherwise they can use spruce for the rest of the case. Interesting, um, something I've not thought about before. Now here's the frames, and uh, sorry, I might have been a bit quiet previously because there was lots of factory noise. I'll have to try and speak up then, but this should be okay, I think. Uh, and this is obviously finishing off the frame. It's got to be very smooth on the top before it's polished. Uh, sorry, before it's um, painted and then polished. So here we have the frame, it's uh, coated here to, to make it smooth, that's the idea, and filled up obviously where, with filler as well. And after that, um, this is the red spray last of all, and it's very smooth, it feels very smooth to the touch, uh, as we do when we polish gunners, you have to get it really smooth before you apply polish. So this, uh, here we have frame colours now, that's the standard frame colour for old pianos, that's the modern frame colour there. This uh, one here is for white pianos. And this is a sort of customised kind of colour. The Bersendorf will customise us for, for any colour, really. There's a kind of sanding tray here where they put, put the frame on and then sand it down. And if we look over here, we can see the frame. This is really smooth now. It feels extremely smooth. It's really important. It's like when we French polish, you have to get the surface really, really smooth. That's the secret of getting a good polish. And it does feel really nice. Now here we have the general frame of the piano construction spruce and red beech apparently. Um, they're using spruce because uh, they feel that it uh, helps whatever spruce you put on tends to um, harmonize, uh, what's the right word for it, you, it increases the vibration of generally. The idea is to get maximum uh, vibration of the whole piano which is uh, interesting. Uh, we're not allowed to video quite a lot of things in the, in the factory area, but this one we can, which is a, a list, and the veneer is called Vavona, apparently. We'll look at the outside. No, it's unpolished, obviously, so it'll look different from this. Um, but I think we've made an, I made an error earlier on, because uh, this is not the rest plank uh, here, and that's the wood we saw earlier, I think. You can see the laminates, but the rest plank we'll just move over to slowly, and you can see the beautiful construction here. Again, we've got spruce, we've got uh, red beech, uh, red beech for where things need to be attached. And now we're zeroing in on the rest plank, and you can see that there is some laminate there, so uh, I'm not quite sure whether we videoed that earlier. But uh, you can see there's the laminate for the bottom of the rest plank, but here we have maple, and uh, very much like Canadian rock maple rest plank, and uh, it's a uh, beautiful construction. And this is how the Agraphs are put on in the next section now, so they can be turned. Obviously, um, it's very rare to get a broken agraph, but it does happen now and again. But never had one on a Bersendorfer before. This is a Model 200 frame here, and uh, there's a Capodastro bar. I want to show you that because apparently it can be removed because it needs, uh, with reconditioning, you often need to alter it. Maybe the strings have grooved it or needs to be taken out and redone so obviously if it's useful you can take it out and the, the edge can be uh, put right again. That's the other side of the Capodastro bar 
uh, which apparently is unique that it can be taken out. Uh, I didn't know that. Here's a bit noisy, as you can tell. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Um, and uh, this is we swing is exactly the same work that we, we commonly do, but probably a lot more efficient and accurate. Uh, so they're individually strung. This is some, something we've mentioned before about Bersendorfer being individually strung. The, the idea being that it's more stable. Watch the string being put on. You can see uh, this is obviously the, the more you do it, the quicker you get. But we'll just watch one being done see how it's done. We we'll take it to the end, wind it on. Uh, that's remarkably efficient, isn't it? I'll go around the other side next time, I think. Here we are, just going moving around. Um, very important to wear gloves for the string and also for your fingers, I'm sure, that they don't get cut. Uh, there we are. Let's have a look from the, the back. So, I've got the pin being wound on. string being wound on the pin, sorry. All three, exactly what we do, put the row in first. Uh -oh. Very good. Very impressive. Just to show you the, jack, the jacks, you must put jacks underneath to stop the frame being damaged and they've uh, got to be held at reasonably high tension as well. I'm sorry, we're going to run out of uh, flash in a minute because the battery is running down, but that's an arbol hammer that. Just to show that they use both Arbel and Renner, these are Renner hammers. And these keys are from Kluger, and the uh, action of course is from Renner. Uh, the comment here is the Bobinga wood here, which is the looks like mahogany, um, is actually forbidden now and can't be used, but they had old stock they could use up, but needs a certificate to go with it. And this is White Beach, it's replacing it. Uh, here's the Bersendorfer Imperial in construction. Uh, I won't take everything, in the, uh, I'm not allowed to take some uh, video anyway, but uh, it'll be too long. I don't want to make a massively long video, but just to give an idea uh, how wonderful this factory is. So this is uh, this is Bersendorfer being restored 9596, um, and uh, it's got new, the top quality, premium quality Renner hammers. They're voicing with number five needles here. Um, apparently had to do a lot of work. The hammers were a bit dull. It's been reshaped and now finely voiced here. Do you go right up to the tip of the hammer? Or yes, I go up. About to about there, and from the, and from the other side. What, what about the crown of it? Do you touch the top at all? Sometimes, when it's really, uh, re re really stiff, then I might give a pinch, but, uh, but not too much. Not too much. Yeah, yeah. video is really already very long and uh, just going to finish off now with a quick look at the showroom and uh, see the different models that are here. Uh, I think probably we'll conclude the video here though. You can see the uprights, different lengths of Bersendorfer, uh, the 170 we often have in stock. They restore 
Bussendorf uh, Grands here as well, uh, which is something I didn't realise. So I probably should have thought that they would. Um, and uh, different models here, different colours. Really, basically, Bussendorf is a very inventive company and uh, will take up any challenge uh, in terms of finish. If you look at this one here, I'm um, not sure what this is called, but it's a very, very beautiful veneer and huge amount of work gone into this. And of course, the piano is very expensive. There's no uh, what we've seen in the factory is that they they want to produce the very very best, and so uh, if you're going to do that, obviously the price is uh, quite high, but really worthwhile. A very another very interesting design. I think my flash is uh, finished because uh, the battery's running down. Apologies for that, but thank you very much for your patience. Uh, I hope that it was all audible. We'll have to have a look at the video later on and see. Thank you very much.